sacrifice father we come and we bless your name O oh god for you are holy lord you are lord god almighty you are loving you're kind you're gracious O oh god and O oh lord abounding in love and your mercy endure forever father we praise you and thank you upon this day O oh god for the sacrifice that was made for the sins of the whole world your son jesus christ he is our redeemer and O oh father he is our lord he is everything to us. We bless your God now as we ask, dear Lord, as we come before your throne of grace, that you would pour your anointing upon us. Send your Holy Spirit to God, dear Father, to grant us grace and courage in this time of need. As we come now, O Lord, in the name of Jesus, 
we lay ourselves, O God, before you, before your throne of grace, as we wait upon you, God, for your favor and your favor. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 19, verse 28 to 42. Let us listen to God's word. Jesus knew that by now everything had been completed, and in order to make the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there full of cheap wine. So as Pontius spoke to the wine, put on a stalk of hyssop, and lifted it up to his lips. Jesus drank the wine and said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Then the Jewish authorities asked Pilate to allow them to break the legs of the men who had been crucified and to take the bodies down from the crosses. They requested this because it was Friday and they did not want the bodies to stay on the crosses on the Sabbath, since the coming Sabbath was especially holy. So the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man and then of the other man who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, plunged a spear into Jesus' side, and at once blood and water poured out. The one who saw this happen had spoken of it, so that you also may believe. What he said is true, and he knows that he speaks the truth. This was done to make the scripture come true. Not one of his bones will be broken. And there's another scripture that says, People will look at him whom they pierced. After this, Joseph, who was from the town of Arimathea, asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph was a follower of Jesus, but in secret, because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities. Pilate told him he could have the body. So Joseph went and took it away. Nicodemus, who at first had gone to see Jesus at night, went with Joseph, taking with him about 100 pounds of spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. The two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices according to the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial. There was a garden in the place where Jesus had been put to death. And in there, there was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Since it was a day before the Sabbath, and because the tomb was closed by, they placed Jesus' body there. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his own holy word. Amen.
from John, chapter 18, verses 17 to 40. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why ask thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them, before they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer thou the high priest. So Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smittest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, At not thou also one of his disciples? He denied and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose heir Peter cut off, said, did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led did Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not unto the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, what, accusi what accusation bring he against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take he him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, Thou didst think of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, I am a Jew. Thy own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou not a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I unto the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is the truth? And when he had said this, he went out again into the Jews, and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But he have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will he therefore that I release unto you the king of Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. This is the word of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, the angels come before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve.
Lord, on this blessed Good Friday, we are given a different kind of experience. An experience away from your house of prayer into our homes where you have sent us back for prayers and hymns and words to be uttered in our backyards, in our living rooms, in our dining rooms, in our bedrooms, in our kitchens, in our bathrooms, among the community where we have become the church without walls. Help us in this experience to be transformed like that soldier to recognize you as Father, to recognize our Christ as your Son, to recognize that you are still at work in our lives. May our responses bring honor and glory to your name, to Christ we pray. We heard from two, one, two readings taken from the lectionary that seems to want us to focus and recall the entire journey of Christ on uh, that wretched day from Triumph to Calvary at the foot of the cross. But let's uh, focus on uh, the journey that he made, where the crowd accompanied him. For that crowd that journeyed to Calvary with him presented some interesting characteristics. There was a fickle crowd. The crowd that uh, Trinis would call and wagons. That would be the crowd that quickly cried, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. That would be the crowd that cried, free Barnabas. That would be the crowd that included that soldier who was uh, lucky enough, fortunate enough, blessed enough to experience first hand transformation at the foot of the cross. To recognize and be able to proclaim that truly he is the son of God. And now it would be cliché of me to ask the question, which crowd do you belong? To which crowd do you belong? So I'm just going to leave that right way. The thought is already in your heads. Let's focus and observe now what happened when the day ended, when he made his final sentence of uttering, it is finished after the soldier made his pronouncement that truly he is the son of God and when the crowd went back to business as normal. The disciples seem to have been left to battle on their own the grief that was given to them. The women of his family were left to finish off the burial rites post burial there seemed to be a quieted, hushed silence. The crowd went back to their business as normal, while the disciples and his families seemed to be in disarray, probably hiding in fear, anticipating how they would be treated after all of this. Very relevant to our context, would be to think what happens in our time in situations of hurt and frustration. What happens when we become victims of the gossip mongrel of our society? What happens when we shatter each other with words that are untrue and unkind? We see every day a society destroying itself uh, with unnecessary tension, division, hurt. And we see this especially in our responses to political productions, in our responses to media releases. When we see how divided we have become in most unwanted and unbecoming of ways, 
we noticed the crowd went back to their own business as normal and left the disciples and his family to deal with what they did to them. But we also noticed that while the disciples and his family thought they were left in disarray and alone and lonely, to whom did he appear first? We shall see on Easter Sunday morning. And uh, on whom did the Holy Spirit, upon whom did the Spirit descend first? Ah, point meet. But the troubles did not end there for the disciples. It was as if the crowd was watching from a distance, waiting anxiously for that moment to see them slip up again waiting for their next opportunity to act with attack. There are many lessons of life we can learn from uh, the crowd, the fickle crowd, from uh, the bandwagonists, from the disciples and his family. Firstly, perhaps, the disciples never reacted to them, giving them ammunition. How do we act, react to our own situations given by others? Fighting fire with fire, adding fuel to the fire? Let them carry on. The gossip mongers, secondly, will do their thing, leaving you in misery and hurt and frustration. They move on with their lives, seeking another opportunity with somebody else to attack. Leaving you to lose sleep, trying to figure them out when next they will come back to you. Asking the question, why you? And then perhaps a final thought, Jesus appearing to his family and disciples first signals the reminder that God does not leave his children ever alone. No matter what we go through in life, through all of this, in our experience, we have never been left alone. While we must be in quarantine at this time, the Lord God continues to be our strength and support even beyond the cross, even outside of the church, even apart from our positions of offices that we hold. We are not in the church of the today to celebrate the victory of the cross. But we are now in our homes still able to get the message of the cross throughout the community. That even in our darkest and loneliest moments, God is with us. Such is the passion expressed on that cross, beyond that cross, and such is the passion we are expected to express outside of the church in our homes and in our communities. We are never alone. Remember that. We are never alone. The yoke may be too heavy or too much. The cross may be too heavy. We may be thirsty, but we will never be left alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father and Lord, we come to you today, Lord, in the loving and precious name, O God, of your Son, Jesus Christ, the one, O God, Lord Father, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, who sits, O God, Father, upon the throne, and who is worthy, O Lord Father. You, O God, Lord Father, O God, you are all love, O God, Lord Father, 
O oh, help in ages past, O oh God. You are the great I am God, O oh Lord, Father, of who wert and art and evermore shall be. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, Lord, Father, we stand, O oh God. Let, O oh Lord, Father, the arm of your Holy Spirit today, O oh God. And we lift up, O oh God, Lord, Father, your people, O oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In our churches, O oh Lord, Father, today, we pray, dear God, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would bless and strengthen, O oh God, Lord, men and women of vision, O oh God, that you have called today to be your royal priesthood. And we pray, O oh God, Lord, Father, that we will not lose courage or hope or even faith, O oh God, but we will stand, O oh Lord, Father, with the armor and breastplate, O oh God, of love and faith and peace and joy, O oh God, kindness, Lord, all the gifts of your Holy Spirit today, Lord, that we will reach, O oh God, everyone in our nation today and even our world, O oh Lord. We pray, dear Heavenly Lord, that you're going to continue to bless us, O oh Lord, your people that you have called, O oh God. Beginning, O oh God, from our moderator, all our church workers, O oh God, Lord Father, all your people, O oh God, Lord Father, who today are calling upon your name. Lord Jesus, we pray, dear God, that today that you would grant us your grace, O oh Lord, that vision and wisdom, O oh Lord, we pray, dear Father, that in this time of this pandemic, O oh God, Father, we would recognize, O oh Lord, that you are merciful, O oh God, that you are loving, O oh God, and, O oh Lord, abounding in steadfast love. So today, Lord, as we ask your blessing, as we remember, O oh God, Lord Father, the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have given your Son, O oh Lord Father, for the redemption of the sin of the world. Salvation, redemption plan was done, O oh God. And now, O oh Lord, we pray for our country. We ask, O oh God, Lord Father, that you would remind our leaders, O oh God, that not to lean on their own understanding, O oh God, but Heavenly Lord, that they, O oh God, will acknowledge you, dear God, and you will direct their path. For indeed, O oh God, sin, O oh God, Lord Father, can reproach a nation, but righteousness, O oh God, will take us through. And even when, O oh God, Lord Father, our leaders do not know where to look or where to turn, dear God, they can say, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence come my help, for my help come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Once more, O oh God, Lord Father, we pray for your strength. We pray, O oh God, Lord Jehovah Jireh, Lord, that you will supply, O oh God, the medication, O oh God, Lord Father. You will supply, O oh God, the patience, O oh God, for those, O oh Lord, who work, dear God, and who, dear Father, hold a fort today. Heavenly Lord, hear us as we cry to you, O oh God. And, O oh Lord Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, the worthy Lamb of God who sits upon the throne, he, O oh God, Father, is everything to us. Hear us now, O oh God, we pray, as we place your people, O oh God, our country, O oh God, all our workers, O oh God, in your hand, dear Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Mm -hmm.